You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hi, this is JF from Cataclysm, and you're listening to Buzz Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Buzz Mayhem Hour, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I am your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I am bringing you guys awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a huge privilege to welcome back Jean-Francois of Cataclysm. And Cataclysm will release their 15th full-length studio album entitled Goliath via Nuclear Blast Records on August the 11th. This is their follow-up to 2020's Unconquered, and you want to check out their current single off of Goliath, Bringer of Vengeance. And it's good to have Jean-Francois back on here, and I uh, love talking to him. And what's going on, man, and how you doing? Uh, doing great. I mean, uh, it's I'm excited to be uh, to be starting the, the promotion from this new album. We worked so hard on it, and we're super proud of it. So oh, yeah. uh, it's, it's nice to, to get to talk to a lot of people about it. And uh, nice to to see you again. And uh, also, always awesome. Uh, I mean, uh, it's summer here in Texas, super hot, so I don't go outside much. Uh, (laughs) So it's nice to be chilling in the AC here and and talking to people. (laughs) Yeah, you you keep that heat down down south. Don't bring it to Kentucky, man. You know, I don't want that shit up here no more. (laughs) All right, so when you think back and you realize the band has been doing this for almost three decades now, did you think it would last this long, or did you have any expectations when this band formed, man? I mean, we started so young. We were a high school band, pretty much, yeah. and uh, we were doing this out of passion, out of like love for metal, and we had this thing where we wanted to be like super extreme and more like more than what was going on in the scene back in the, in the early nineties. And that was our thing. So we tried to push ourselves like super hard. We didn't have all the, the best knowledge of, of music. I, I mean, we were all starting uh, at playing our instruments and all that. And when we got together and started putting these songs together, we didn't have any real, real base into mu- like musical knowledge. We were just like, piece things together all as best as we possibly could and i think that drive and that energy we had in, in those times like that that's what gave us the record deal and we i i, I personally have no idea that it would get this far uh, uh, and and we were really just doing this for fun like like any high school band would start so uh, looking back like i i for me it's uh, mind blowing to, to see all the countries we saw, all the, the fans oh, yeah. we met around the world. It's, it's insane. And I bet a thousand dollars on this, that you guys go back and listen to that old school stuff. When you first started, and you guys cringe, you go, Oh God, what were we doing? Uh, in, in, in some ways. Yes. And in some other ways, like, I mm-hmm. still love that fire and that oh, ener- yeah. energy we had. So when I, whenever i play back those songs i'm like man it, it, it would it would, it would kind of be a nightmare to try to play them again with that same intention just because when you learn to do something more properly it's hard to do it improperly because we sure like like it's a uh, hard to explain but it would some of these songs would be really hard to be played nowadays with that same energy and intention just because of the way we play now and the evolu- okay. the musical evolution and all that but it's still cool to hear it and, and i some somewhat understand what uh people liked about those songs and those records back in the that time frame 
It was raw. I mean, when you yeah. had a band, you know, like a garage band, high school band, it's raw. It's what people love. They wanted to see that raw shit. They didn't want to hear all kinds of distortion and all this other mm-hmm. stuff added in. They wanted that raw grit and right to your face and done with it. That's what, and that's why I was when I was in high school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's it, that 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 pureness of of it all. It's it's yeah. awesome. And I sometimes I I hear some new bands that kind of have that energy and that drive and and that. I don't want to say unprofessionalism, but like the, the the purity of it, it's it's awesome. Does it still light your fire though to this day when you go back and you say I need to pick me up and, I, and just go back and listen? Does that still reignite that fire for you? Oh, for sure, for sure. Like I mean, I I feel still really passionate about music, and I love what we do. I'm so happy that we somehow managed to have a this career that we have of doing doing this, and. I I hear some of those newer bands that come out like that are more uh, at their beginning stages, I'd say, and they have that drive and that energy, and and that that sometimes it kicks me in my ass and, and lights a fire, makes me want to do more of that as well. And I, yeah. I think I think we one of the things we try to do on this new album Goliath is bring back a bit of those elements that are like man, you just you just want to kick kick the door in and then just start the song and even if it's a, a little less perfect perfectly executed on on your instrument it's just that that drive and that energy how excited are you guys to have your upcoming 15th full-length studio album entitled goliath out on august the 11th and be done with it and just move on and did the album turn out exactly the way you guys wanted it to i mean we did this kind of because we did a lot of touring last year and, and this year, mm-hmm. and we had a gap of like four months uh, in the fall of last year to kind of, we had the tons of ideas that we were working on, but we had those four months to piece it all together, record it, get it ready, because uh, it was a time frame everybody could do it, and the label thought it was a good timing to, to release a new cataclysm, all, uh, like all the stars were aligned, so we just talked a lot about it can we do this and yes no and then everybody was like okay that's that's the timing let's do it and we just got into it and that and I, I i find because we did it kind of spontaneously that that energy and drive was very much alive and i think we did a good job at ca- capturing it as well so pretty happy of the re- about this record that was going to be my next question. You know, did did the band add anything differently on this album musically that fans that are that are accustomed to? I mean, they're going to hear something like, "Wow, I didn't know that was going to be in this album." Well, on the last, on the previous album, Unconquered, uh, we experimented with those seven string guitars for the first time, uh, the, the low tuning and that new range of of uh, notes and frequencies that we never had before. So it was kind of new. And now I find that on this new album, we developed, we pushed that angle more and better because we got better at it. And back on the previous one, it was fairly new. So now it's like we we kind of know what how to deal with it and how to push it to another level, I guess. And uh, I think I think we did that on the new album. I mean, it, it's that evolution of growth. You know, yeah. look at you guys going to seven string guitars and then it's like everybody says, oh, Metallica's new album sucks. No, I, I don't. I disagree with that wholeheartedly because they, they've evolved. They they hit. I mean, they they evolved with the times. I mean, that's just how it is, folks. It's either you evolve with the times or you yep. you sneak. That's it. I mean, as, a, as an artist, like you learn things constantly. Yeah. And you acquire new uh, new taste uh, also airing different things that people are doing and it's it's it's, it's an evolution it's not so much of a, a, a huge change but it's an evolution yeah. and uh, you try to portray that in, in, in the, the the songs that you're writing and all that and we never were that band that tried to do the exact same thing every record we always try to push ourselves to do better to do a, a bit different and to keep keep up with the times so to speak and uh, i feel like this new album not only we're keeping up with the time but we're pushing ahead like we're doing stuff that i never heard before on records and and things like that so i'm i'm excited to be able to somewhat like innovate still in a in a music 
jar sure. that everything has been pretty much done uh, every stones have been <laughs> lifted and looked upon and no matter how you twist and turn it it's still like it's still all the same elements that have been there since the start but i feel like we're uh, somewhat bringing in new uh, new textures new colors into this and and i like how it sounds and i'm excited about it so hopefully the fans like it as well Okay, JF, I'm I'm glad that you brought that up because I've been wanting to ask this question for a while now. But as an artist, if you guys made the same album for 15 years, would you honestly get tired of it and be like, "Look, what are we doing, guys?" Yeah, I'd be. I would question the the relevancy of yeah. of doing this, like you, for myself, like as a as a musician, and also for the fans because they they had all those records before, and why give like. <laughs> What's the purpose of a new album that sounds exactly like the the one before? Like they already have the one before to listen to, and it's yeah. I, I don't know. I, I in my mind, I prefer to offer something new as much as possible without going too much outside of what that thing is supposed to be. Like, uh, uh, which for us, it's like that that kind of fiery metal energy that we had at the at the beginning of our career we, we still want to have that element in there but yeah. we want to push it further and try to see where it can go with with all this the, the, the new elements and the, the, the new uh, uh, i'd say even like sound design and and song like songwriting all, all these new things that we incorporate in it these uh these new ingredients that um makes it something more unique and more uh, newer to, to, to the ears. And hopefully like we create something that touches people somewhere and they, they want to <laughs> keep listening to it and, and make them feel uh, certain emotions of, about the music and, and all that. You know, I, I said this earlier and we talked about this a little bit, but this is your 15th studio album that's going to draw. Mm -hmm. How special is it to have these albums in the Cataclysm Music Library and still be able to carry on with your guys' music? I, I, I mean, for me, it's it's all almost like mind blowing that all of us still want to do this <laughs> after all the years and being there at, at like we're not old yet, but like we're start, starting to feel our age and and. Uh, just to have like four guys wanting to keep on doing this and pushing it, I, I find it beautiful in, in, in itself. Like, mm -hmm. and I see this with older bands that I see live or, or that, I'm, that I'm a fan of, and I'm, I'm gonna see them at a festival or somewhere or when they, they pass through town, and I'm like, wow, like, I, be, because of the career that we have, I understand how they must probably feel themselves. And, uh, I, I find it really awesome to, to to still be able to see that energy or that liveness of, of certain musicians and at a certain age and I, I I totally like find that really awesome. All right, so 15 albums in this and I know this is gonna be a crazy question, but this this makes sense folks when I ask this and, and JF will get it when I ask it. Have you guys hit your stride yet? Have you, have you guys said, okay, look, we are now finally, accustomed to what we need to do from album to album have you finally hit that stride as cataclysm with your sound well i find that um when we write certain songs and then we all look at each other and be like okay we we got something here like we know when we got something as i find like as opposed to before we didn't we just wrote music and then people told us, hey, we love that track. <laughs> the record label was like, man, this is the song, but we had no idea. Uh, as, now, I think with the experience we have, we can we kind of feel and know what our fan base likes to hear. And I think like when we deliver certain tracks that I know for sure this is going to be the track that people will like and uh, in that sense uh, yeah i think i think we know when we're we we're hitting it on the nail nailing it on the head but um in in another sense like it's uh it's it's just experience i think talking you know it blows my mind when i hear answers to that question because i've had groups on here it's been on here doing this 40 plus years mm -hmm. and and they're like yeah after 10 years we finally hit our stride and i'm like oh my god it took that i mean i'm just it blows my mind, and I guess it goes back to the evolution of the band. 
you know, of what direction they want to go and throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks and move on to the next album. It's like Pantera. Mm-hmm. When they, look at Pantera when they came in. They they was yep. they were glam rock or power metal, however you want to call it. And then when Phil Anselmo came in, it's like, where the fuck did this band come at? You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Man, they, but they, they pushed boundaries of what metal was in those years. And yeah. It, it was so much ahead of, of everything. And they revolutionate. They, they, it was like a small revolution of the, the jar back in those times. And, and still nowadays, you listen to an old Pantera record that's like, 25, 30 years old, and it still sounds like oh. re- relevant against oh, bands that are coming out today. It's so funny, though. If, if And I'm going to say this right now, and you can go look it up. It's the truth. If Metallica hadn't put out the Black Album, we would not have Pantera's vulgar display of power because they were like, oh, God, we got to go do something heavy. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? I mean, come on. It's Metallica. I, 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 I'm a huge Metallica fan. I don't care. Yeah, Love yeah. Metallica. I mean, the Black Album, I think if the Black Album hadn't hit as big, I don't think they'd be as big as they are today. That's just me. I mean, I, I, Metallica, I, like, one thing that blows me away from them and uh, is you, you go back and go check out shows that they played, like, in, in, in the Master of Puppets or the Justice for All tour. Yeah, yeah. How, how energetic, tight, and professional they were uh as a band i'm, I'm like him and blows me away every time yeah i agree with that so this album goliath is good versus evil so is, is this album in some ways how the world is now especially everyone getting hurt over the littlest things and people are just people are just generally angry now they're hateful with it with everything you say yeah, I mean, uh, for us, it was like this this thing, like the, the, it's the, the small guy against this the world, like this big beast that uh, everything seems to be right now. Like it's to every aspect of, of life. Like I feel that uh, somewhat like the, the small group of elite is on top and then everybody else at the bottom. And you try to break through certain barrier and, and it's it seems almost impossible. And even even in the music world, it's kind of like that. Like you got a big band sticking together, they all tour together, and then for for bands that are doing well like us, it, it, even for us, it's hard to break in there and and get into that that bigger level that like is almost impossible to get in. And uh, but we created our own world, our own universe, and uh, that's why that's what keep is keeping us like going. And uh, and these things are, are we, we touch those subjects within our lyrics, and uh, sometimes it's like in po- in a poetic kind of way, but uh, it's it's in there, and it's things that that we talk about a lot when we're together as 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 band members, and even with our friends, and everybody noticed that like the world's going to a weird place, and yep. it's across the board. Like we go to Europe, we go to South America talk to people and they have the same feeling everywhere and it's it's like it's it's a bit mind-boggling but this is what this record is about it's being a bit against that against the the, the big guy so i gotta know this man i gotta ask your opinion on this and i i've i've, I've asked everybody this so mm-hmm. do you think that during the pandemic all these bands that were just underground i call i still call them underground bands all these bands, they should have been taking advantage of the, the pandemic and, and putting their shit out there, like live streaming especially. I've said it from the day one. I said, look, pandemic, you guys should have been taking advantage of this because it was an even playing field for everybody. Yep. You know? I find like a pandemic for me, it was also really, uh, really good, you know, because I, I run my little uh, recording studio home and, um, it, it, it that studio kept me alive because it paid my bills while we while we couldn't tour and couldn't do anything with a band, and there are so many artists that um, needed help to work in the studio and working on music, and they, they, they I, I got a lot of jobs from from that, so that was pretty cool. But I think a lot of bands did a lot of things, but then a lot of bands should have taken advantage to to put themselves more out there for sure. Yep. Because yep. then, you, no matter if you're small or big, it was like everybody's on the same level. Because nobody knows how to deal with this. It's great. like it's a new thing. Nobody knows how to react. Even the the big managers or the big labels, they just 
try, trying things, but nobody knew how to react to this because it's a new thing. I mean, think about it, man. All these young bands that they were trying to break the, you know, break through that cycle. You had the way, the way social media is now, mm-hmm. you were insane not to take advantage of it. I mean, Facebook, TikTok, yeah. YouTube. It, it was at your fingertips. And I'm sorry, I, I still say do it today because why not? Why yeah, not? For sure. that, you know, it's, it's push, push your things. It's, uh, use all the tools that you have to, to, promote your music and to promote your your stuff because no matter if you're metallica or you're like a garage band you have the same tools yep. and yep. so everybody's at the same level in, in that sense don't you wish you had all this stuff back in the day man <laughs> <laughs> man back in the day we our, fir- our first store we were there with the maps reading the maps in the van and, and like <laughs> There was there was no GPS, there was yeah, no internet. Yeah. Calling up the promoter, hey, we're on the way. Where where's this club at? <laughs> Word of mouth, handing out flyers, emails, yeah. constantly emails, and, and get flagged for for uh, spamming. You're like, I'm just trying to get my show out there, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I still remember the day we got our first fax machine. That was like a new oh, technology, yeah. and we're like, hey, we're faxing the the label and, and that. <laughs> some of these promoters, and it's a. Big uh, fan investment with the fax machine. <laughs> How's the fans' feedback been on the release of this new single, Bringer of Vengeance, off this new album? So far, it's been like across the board really good, and I'm, I'm stoked about it because, like, I was sure that it was going to work, but in another way, as an artist, you're never sure 100%. Sometimes yeah. you're, you release something that you're so sure people will like it and they don't, or they don't. Or they're like, ah, it's good. Then nothing. <laughs> but but this one is like, we can tell just from the, the norm, no, number of pre-orders we're getting. And uh, the record label called us. They said like they sold a thousand vinyls. They need to reprint and repress oh, wow. right away and, and do a second batch and things like that. It's it's exciting to hear. And after, after all these years and all these albums and uh, a lot of people saw us live because we toured a lot uh, in the past couple of years. So uh, they they're, they just recently saw us. So they want to, they're, they're excited about getting new music and we're excited as well. I, I can't wait to go back out on the road and play those new songs for sure. But the, the Bring Your Vengeance, it's so far, it's a great uh, reaction for the first single. And we're about to release the second single in about, a week or two i think mm. and I'm, I'm excited about that because it's it's a pretty different jar uh of track like bring your vengeance is more a slower sludge kind of kind of vibe and then the next one is super fast with super melod uh, tons of melodic riffs and uh i'm excited to see it how, how people are gonna like that next one do you like seeing that feedback though of uh, people saying, okay, there's too much of this, cut back on this, or there's not enough of this? Do you like seeing that feedback or, or no? Yeah, I do. I mean, everybody's got an opinion uh, nowadays and they'll talk about every single detail of things that you do. Like, uh, there's a lot of nerds out there, which I, I like because I fall a bit in that, in that category sometimes. And uh, some things I'll, I'll read and I completely will disagree with and it's not where i'm at in in my musical development then some some other comments you read and you're like yeah maybe that guy's right like what about this or that and then it makes you think and makes you uh want to push certain things further so some of it is good some some of it that's like goes a bit over my head and i i cut because i know in my art that it's not where i want to go so but it depends to, to each zone but hopefully we do well enough that uh, a lot of people will will like what we do and will feel the same way we feel. Bring Your Vengeance was directed by Ivan Kolak of Ico. Let's talk about that, man. How how was having him directing this video for you guys? Well, it, we worked with him, uh, let's say, twelve years ago, twelve, and and we made a, a, a few cool videos with with uh, Ivan and Ico uh, in Serbia, and. Um, and we thought we we're in Europe doing this tour with Soulwork, so we thought like, why not go see Ivan again and Ico and ask him if, if the, he wants to do the, the videos. And he was, they were super stoked about it. And we were, cause like we haven't been been uh, working with those guys in a while. And 
they always delivered great uh, videos and we thought why not like 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 let's do this for this record so before we started the tour we flew to serbia we stayed there a week and we shot two videos the bring your vengeance and also the die as a king which is going to be the next single coming out uh, so the, it's a concept video both videos it's a story that goes from one to another and um it's it's uh, it's really cool the way they built it and we we got the chance to to do this again with them and we had a good time and then from there we flew to belgium to the first show and we started the tour what led the track bringer of vengeance to, to be that first song released off this album i know there could have been other bangers that could have went first but what what said this has to go out for the first one well, when we started working on this record, uh, all of us really liked it because it was different a bit from the other songs on the album. And uh, then we went ahead and sent the track to, to, to the mixers, Chris Clancy and, and Colin Richardson over in the UK. And they were wor working the mix for the record. And they, they both of them said, like, this is the track. Bring your vengeance. You gotta release that one first, and we're, we're like, oh, cool, cool, okay. We're shocked or like a little bit because we thought some others could have been like the track, but they they thought it was this one. And then when we sent the album to the record label to Nuclear Blast, a lot of those people working the label, they were like, that's the track. We're like, okay, cool. <laughs> so then we decided, okay, let's release that one first, and then uh, Die as a King second. And then we have a, a, a few more uh, singles coming before the the release of the record, and um, but then we we had the, this idea of the concept of the the king in the video that that gets killed is that guy that's uh, it, it's like the war is pretty much over they they took over everything uh, the kingdom all that the, and uh, they invaded the castle. And the king, like, in, instead of fleeing, decided, you know what, I'm going to stay and face my, my fate. He knew he was going to die, but he, he wanted to go with honor. And that's what the track is about, bring your vengeance. Uh, and die, die as a king. So the both, both track is a concept. So die as a king. So the, the, he decided, to, you know what, like, even if I, if you can apply that in your own life as well. And for us, yeah. we feel like, also as musicians and, and other aspect of our life, like we felt like, you know what, like if nobody likes what we do anymore or this or that happen, like we're going to go out our way and give it all. And that's, that's what the song is about. And then the, the, the bringer vengeance, which it, it's okay. The, the, the video is dies. A King is like the prequel to bringer of vengeance. Uh, bring it a vengeance is the second one in the story but we released it first because that's the order they wanted the single to come out but uh, in bring a vengeance the concept is the the son of the king that that got away when he gets killed takes his revenge and uh, oh. he, he plotted his revenge his whole life he got he trained he made sure he was ready and when the time came he he, he took his revenge and that that was that's what the song is about like it's, it's just sometimes Revenge of Meal, best served cold, and you, you you take your time, and when the time comes, you you get your 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 revenge, and that it's it's that's kind of like the concept of those two songs and the two videos. Was there a track for the album that totally ended up sounding different than what it was intended to? Is there one that kept changing or no? Um, sometimes it happens on the previous record, but on this one, no. Uh, on this one, we we kind of knew. Uh, pretty fast what we wanted to do because even uh, the, oh, there was one track I think it was the the title track called uh, Goliath and um, we worked certain ar arrangement and then I flew to Florida to, to work with Marcel on the song and he had lyrics ideas and we swapped a few riffs and a few things in there and like the old metal section and uh, and even the the the, the drummer, when he was in the studio, he recorded the song this way, uh, they, like the way we, we arranged it. And then out of the blue, one day, Mauricio calls me uh, calls me home. It's like, dude, we got to go back to the original version. I'm like, what? The drums are already recorded. Like, we're, we're, we're done. <laughs> like, he's like, no, man, it's so much better. <laughs> I was okay. Then I, 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 I 
looked at James was like, okay, you gotta learn it a different way. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled up the files from the the original way we had the song going, and then he had to re-record and relearn like the the way it, it was before all that. And uh, that was the track, the track Goliath. So we had it right the first time and we messed with it too much and then we just went back to what it was. <laughs> You could be your own worst enemy, man. It's like, no, it's good the way it is. No, that it's out all this shit. No, it's no, let's just keep it. <laughs> yeah. Scrap everything. Let's go back. Yeah. To everything. Yeah. I know these are your babies, JF. I understand yeah. it completely. But are there any tracks sending out more to you than any right now on this new album? Uh, one of my favorite is um, the, the first one, Dark Wings of the Deception. Uh, it's just that it's such a dark track with the melodies on I still hear the melodies, and it, it gives my I give myself goosebumps when it plays, and I'm like, oh, every time, every single time I hear that track, and it's still my favorite for for that reason. When I was writing it, I I just knew I was like in that zone where I, I wanted a certain vibe, and I I really nailed nailed it on that one, and uh, so uh, most probably might be the third single, but we're not sure yet. There's still debating that but for me is it, sh it should be the next uh, logical step after after the two first ones and it's one of my favorite tracks on this on this album man i gotta know this after 15 freaking albums that you guys are pumping out the the set list there's got to be is it hard to create that set list now and is there is there anything that's not being included on a live set that you want to put in eventually yeah i mean we have i'd say I'd say we have like about 25 tracks that we will go back to that list whenever we tour and we, we're going to play songs from those 25 because we know that those are the songs that always work well no, and no matter what order or because we always end up having a set list that's like about 14 tracks, maybe 15. But we have 25 tracks that we choose from to build that one set list and um yeah for sure i'd love to have like include more of the older stuff that's done in there that we we don't get to play often and uh, sometimes we do we like like on the last tour we we busted out some oldies from from the 2000s era that we haven't played like so long ago so so that was fun to bring those out and uh now it's hard to choose the set list because um, we have so many albums and so many songs that people want to hear and so many songs that we want to play and you have to kind of deal with that and piece something together and no matter what you do it seems like there's always something missing any songs that did not make this album we can see on another album down the road possibly ep or just a uh standalone single possibly or, or no I, well every single time i write a record uh, there's always uh, parts and songs. Sometimes it's all like pretty much done structures of songs that we choose not to put on the record, but they're really good and they're still there in my computer. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of those uh, with the years. And um, sometimes like when we write a new album and uh, on some days, like I, I don't feel inspired to write new music. I, I go back to some of these songs and see if I can bring it back and maybe polish it and change it a bit and and give it like a, another spin. And sometimes, sometimes it happens. Or I'll take just one riff, and be like, oh man, that, that third riff of that one song was amazing. And that that the whole song as a song, we didn't choose to keep it, but that one part is awesome. So I go there, I steal it, and then I write something else to go along with it and it becomes all new song so I, I always keep everything is the track listing placement important for this album or just any album that you guys put out yes we actually we spent a lot of thought on the on a tr track playlist um, because i find that certain songs come out a lot better uh, in a different order so like 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 the first three four tracks are like super important to be like really working like the beginnings the end the energy it's got you gotta keep that energy flowing throughout the record and depending on the way you put the songs i find it changes that dynamic and um yeah we we, we try different things and uh sometimes like I'll, I'll make myself a playlist and then just 
play it in different orders to see how I feel about it. And same with Mauricio. Mauricio super um, uh, picky about the, the 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 song order as well. So we go back and forth a lot before we take the final decision. You produced this album like you've done many times, mm-hmm. but do you like having that freedom to just do it when you guys want to do it? And besides, yeah. you know, having all the pressure and all that kind of, that comes with that, having a you know, actual producer and things. Yeah, totally. Like the the thing that I love about doing things um, myself, or I, I'd, I'd say ourselves, because uh, I pinpoint a lot of stuff just because of my ability to do so. I think I, I, I it's something I developed early on in, in our career. I was able to to take the the reign and be able to to make decisions on certain things that influence the album in a good way. And uh, I find the guys, the guys trust me. And then we have deep conversations about different elements of the, the production. So we we go in there and I we don't have somebody else from the outside coming in and changing everything about the band. Like we, I feel we're more of ourselves because we're able to do the, do this ourselves. And it's, it's awesome the, to have one guy in the band that has the knowledge of, of the recording thing to be able to uh, they produce it the, properly from from scratch all the way to the, the finishing product you know what folks this album cover is amazing and the guy who did this he, he's no stranger to, to creating awesome artwork and that's mr Elran Cantor, and he's worked with testament and flesh mm-hmm. flesh god apocalypse i mean he's done some amazing artwork so how was work with him on this yeah i mean we worked with him a few times, like he did a covers for us for uh, our other band, Ex Deo. And also, I believe he did the Waiting for the End to Come for Cataclysm as well, uh, one of our uh, old, older records. And uh, we knew like he, he was the guy for this one because when we came up with this concept of the, 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 the Goliath thing with the small guy and the, and the big guy, and we thought, you know what, Elyron is perfect because he paints... It's it's a real painting and it has that uh, that classical vibe to it and we wanted that for for this album to depict the the artwork and he, he did a phenomenal job. All right, now we're gonna throw Cataclysm out the door right now. We're just, we're just gonna focus on you, my friend. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if you could write an album equivalent to your favorite band's album, which album would that be? Man, that's such a good question. <laughs> I know. And uh, my my, I if I have to pick like an all time favorite of all time, I would choose Iron Maiden Seven Son of a Seven Son. There you that, go. That that is my uh, my uh, Bible as as an album, and uh, being able to do something that would match that in a, in my own way, I'd be like, well, I'd feel accomplished as an artist. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what's been your most memorable show that the band has been a part of that you still can't believe to this day that it had happened possibly and sometimes like we get to play with, with those huge bands on some of these festivals and it's so awesome like uh, like like we were speaking about maiden we we got to play with them a few times and we were like one or two bands before them and it, and, and i was like um back back on the stage and looking at the eddies on the stage and like the their amp set up and all that i felt like the 14 year old jf was there going like wow <laughs> or or playing like with bands like 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 slayer or things like oh. that like we we got the chance to to play with slayer on one of their last tour in germany uh, because they 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 were they were doing the festival season and they had like headliner shows in between the festivals. So they asked us if we wanted to support some of these headliner shows. So we, of course we said yes. And, and just being there and be like, wow, we're on the Slayer show. It's, it's pretty awesome. Which one did you fanboy out the most? Which one did you have to like calm down and be like, Oh, I can't do this. I got to be cataclysm. We gotta <laughs> do this. I have to be metal. I, to, I can't just go, Oh, I got to be just like this. Uh, funny story. I once we played the, we played with full force open air in Germany, and uh, I was I went to the 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 bathroom and the, the backstage section and and those 
open airs, it's kind of like uh, those uh, construction kind of boot toilet. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm in there waiting, and then Adrian Smith from Maiden comes out from the, <laughs> the toilet, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm going to shake hands and, and say hello. <laughs> but uh, that was a, a, a funny a funny situation. But uh, sometimes things happen, and, and yeah. it's, uh, it's pretty odd. Uh, pretty surreal and or like once i'm a, I'm a big deftones fan and i like uh, I, I like those guys a lot stephen carpenter on, on guitars i is i'd say it's an i'd say he's an influence on, on my playing as well since their beginning and uh once we're playing those those festivals uh heavy uh, heavy montreal and heavy toronto and in canada and um uh, we're playing and then I look on the side and Stephen Carpenter's like right there looking at our show. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> so I had to, to go <laughs> talk to him after the, after the, the set. And uh, that, that was cool that he knew the band and, and uh, like my guitar playing and all that. So we, we, we had a chat and that, that's, that was pretty cool. I love Deftones. I love Deftones. The reason why I love Deftones is because they're not like those new metal bands. They, they were definitely different and they were unique. They were their mm-hmm. own style. And that's that's what I like about them, man. Shove it. Oh my god. Yeah. Dude, I just want to sing it right in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool because they took elements from different things that yeah. are not supposed to work together, but they make it work. Like so some Meshuga style guitar playing, and then you got like some depeche mode type of melodies and vocals. And you mix it together, and then you get like something like Deftones, and it's awesome. It's, it's not supposed to work, but they make it work because they have their own unique thing going. If you could be a member in an iconic band and play one of their legendary shows, which band would it be, and what show possibly? Oh, man, I would love to. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, we can go way back, like that. that like anybody a, 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 a play some classic white snake or deep purple or oh, wow. something something really classic I'd, I'd, I'd love to go back in time and, and do do this thing or like sometimes it's like i was a, i was a child or i wasn't even born in those years or uh, <laughs> or even like 40 14 year old me you get, you get me to play like any classic maiden track with them or or, or metallica I'd, I'd totally be a, a in, a, in another world. <laughs> Look, man, just don't get on the car like on uh, for, for White Snake. Don't get on the car in that love song. Like, what's it called? Uh, Here I go again, I'm on. Don't do that, please. <laughs> no, don't I'm talking that. to I'm talking no. talking to even older. Like, uh, the, <laughs> I, I like I like those really old White Snake records. I think they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, and and just just those old albums, man. You can hear how, and I'm going to say this, and it makes so much sense of how how much how how crisp and how heartfelt and, I, and that sounds weird but it is true if you go back and listen to it there's a warmth in those old two inch tapes and and, and four tracks uh, four tapes whatever you can feel that and hear that and it's it's so much awesome it's the tapes sound so good yeah tape sounds it sounds awesome it has that that quality that vibe yeah. and also also the fact that everybody was playing live together like back in those times like that yeah made that gave the the, the unique energy of those albums all right, my friends and neighbors, please do me a huge favor. Go out and support Cataclysm. This is my friend JF, and and I love their music. I really do, and, and it's awesome to have him back on here. So, folks, get out and check out Cataclysm. They will release their 15th full-length studio album entitled Goliath via Nuclear Blast Records on August the 11th. JF, how can folks stay in touch with you guys? Buy this new album, Everything Under the Sun of Cataclysm. How can you do that? Uh, I mean, um, we have our own uh, store, cataclysm.ca, so you can go on there, pre-order from there, and that's from us, Like, because we actually have a, a deal with the label. We buy our own albums, and we sell them on there, so our merch albums, like you're, you're directly supporting the band if you buy it from us directly. And uh, if you prefer having it shipped from your own country, because our store is in Florida, but if you want it shipped from... Uh, from, from say you're in Germany and you want to have it shipped from Germany, then maybe order it from the, the nuclear blast website. But uh, if you want to help the band, like buy pre-order it from us and we, we make a little more money from, from those sales. And uh, as well as all our socials, like we're all on 
on Facebook and we're all on Instagram and all those things. So if you want to add us on there and follow us and uh, have a chat sometimes when I, whenever I have a bit of time, I'll, I'll reply if somebody texts me. Uh, not everybody uh, right the second, but I, I right. somehow I get to it eventually and uh, things like that. So uh, don't, don't hesitate. Just follow us everywhere and uh, um, support us whenever we come through town. And we're, we're going to do a lot more touring. So please, please come and see us live. I will have all the social links in this uh, interview. It'll be down here in the description on YouTube. So that way nobody can't say, I don't know where to go to. It's, it's in the description. Just click on it. It shows everything. So awesome. Thank you so much. Before I let you go, my friend, would you care to do another promo for my show? No problem. Hi, this is JF from Cataclysm and you're listening to Bud's Man Hour. Everybody stick around. We got some great, great stuff coming up and you only hear these interviews right here on Bods Mayhem Hour. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link that you definitely want to go subscribe to if you like what I'm doing and I hope you guys and gals do. And go out and check out my friends in Cataclysm. They will release their 15th full link studio album entitled Goliath via Nuclear Blast Records on August the 11th. Please go check them out and give them a fair shot because they have some excellent songs out here. And I'm, I'm glad to still see them around because it's very hard these days to still be around as a band right now. So thank you so much, my friend. I wish you guys always nothing but the best of luck. Thank you so much. to Bud's Mayhem Hour. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.